Hi everyone, today I'd like to talk about a very legendary player called Eugenio Torre, who became the first Grandmaster from Asia, and additionally he also beat former world champion Anatoly Karpov at his prime. So they met in 1976 in a game, and he totally outplayed him as black. So let's take a look at a critical position from that game. So here it is black to play, and black seems to have a nicer position here because this queen is quite active, knight on h2 doesn't look very well, and white also has isolated level pawns on the g-file that might become targets. And here most of us will probably play a natural move like bishop to f6, trying to improve the bishop, increasing the pressure on this diagonal. But here white can try knight to f3, and now the queen has to move. For example, we can move it to b6, and then white can try g4, and white seems to be holding the game, or at least not doing that bad in this position. But here Torre play a very deep move, which is the move g4. So this move first of all prevents knight to f3, white cannot capture on g4 with the queen because after queen to g1, at the very least, black is forking the king and the knight. So here white captured with the knight on g4, and here comes another idea of this move g5, which involved a pawn sacrifice, which is the move bishop to g5. So now this bishop is becoming very strong, occupying the g5 square, and here white already has to be very careful because rook to c1 might be an idea after the rook moves. So that's why here Karpov played rook to c2. And here black simply traded rooks. And white captured with the king. White cannot capture with the queen because after queen to g1 there's gonna be a checkmate on c1. That's why white captured with the king. And here black played the move a4. So let's now evaluate the position. Black is a pawn down but white spawns are not very strong as we discussed, and additionally white pieces are not coordinating very well, whereas black pieces are. The queen and the bishop are very active, and the knight is a bit loose on g4. So what I noticed when going through Torres games, he was a very positional player and very technical, and this was also Karpov's forte. So beating a world champion, playing in a technical way, is quite impressive. So even though here white is a pawn up, he's really struggling to find decent moves in this position. Black's main idea is to follow up with a3 and then trying to create threats against the king. So for example if white tries knight to h2, trying to bring the knight back to f3, black will play queen to f2, giving a check, and after king to b1, a3, we see how black is putting pressure all along the second rank. So this is just a very bad position for white. White can give a check on a4, but this is not going to change a lot. The king might come to f8 and then to g7. The king is actually very safe on e8, but white's king on b1 is actually having a lot of trouble. Similarly, if white plays king to b1, then a3 is quite annoying. So here, Karbov tried to fix the pawn structure on the queen side, but after b3 and king to b1, we see that white is going to have problems on the back rank. So this position, even though black is a pawn down, is just totally dominating for black. So here black increased the pressure and played the move d5. Now creating another idea to take on e4. So here white capture and after queen takes, white again is having a very difficult position to play because there's threats all over and also ideas to invade on the first rank. So here Karpov played an interesting idea, giving a pawn in order to improve the knight and play knight to f2 and after queen takes, centralized the knight with knight to e4. And here Torre played bishop to e3. And here white's position is very passive and again white might even run out of moves. The queen has to keep an eye on c2. So understandably here white tried to get some counterplay and play knight c3. Eye in this pawn a4. And after queen to c6, white played d4. But black is still having full control of the position. Played queen to c4. And after d5, e5. Now this pawn might become potentially a very strong pass pawn. And here after queen to h1, queen to d3, king to a1, and bishop to d4, black already has a lot of targets, and additionally, white has problems with the back rank. So here, Karpov tried queen to h8, and after king to d7, and queen to a8, looking for Kanto play against d4, Torre just finished the game in a very technical manner, played queen to f1, forcing the knight back to b1, and now queen to c4, defends a4, and this position again is very desperate for white because White is having just very passive pieces besides the queen, and sooner or later black might have even an idea to push this pawn. So here Karpov tried giving some checks, 
and after queen to b8, king takes, white doesn't have a perpetual check here, so the game continued a few moves, queen to d8, king to e6, white gave a few checks, and after knight to c3, this is just a trick, the idea is that black cannot capture the knight because white would capture on c4, but here after queen to f1, Karpov actually resigned, Black already has an extra pawn and a much better position, if the knight goes back to b1, black has many options, even queen to f2 is very strong, putting pressure on b2, again white doesn't have a perpetual check, and the other idea is to block the check on d1, queen to d1, at the very least black can even trade queens, and this ending is going to be winning with this very strong pass pawn, and black having a much better king, and after knight to d1, black could even try queen to f5, and black is just dominating the game, since white always has to be careful about the first rank, and sooner or later black might start pushing the e pawn. And again, exchanging queens is just leading to a losing ending for white. So what I found really surprising about this game is how Torre is forcing his opponent to a position on which he is pretty much running out of moves. So even though there are many pieces on the board, Karpov didn't really have a decent move to save the game. And here I'd like to show you another very amazing game that he played, using this similar idea of forcing his opponent into what we call a Suxwang, a position on which any move is just bad. Here in this position, black is an exchange noun, but black has these extremely powerful bishops that are looking at white's king. Black could take the rook on f2, which is pinned, and this would still lead to a good position for black, since after taking this bishop on b2 is very strong, but this is definitely not a clear continuation to win the game, and here Torre played this very nice move, queen to f3. So again just improving the queen a little bit more, and even though white has 7 pieces over the board, again white is pretty much running out of moves, so this position is already losing for white, and white actually resigned in this position. So let's see why, first of all the queen cannot actually move because it has to guard the knight, so after a move like queen to e1, queen takes is checkmate because the rook is pinned, the rook cannot move, this pawn can move but black would simply capture it with the bishop, the knight also cannot move because after any knight move then queen to h1 is checkmate, if the king moves then black would simply capture the rook, and black still has this position on which white doesn't have very good moves because there's pressure on this knight and the king as well. So that leaves us with pawn moves, as I said b6 here or later will be captured, so white can try g4, and here black can simply play a waiting move, for example bishop to b6, just blocks this pawn, and after h3 here black can move the bishop, for example bishop to e4, and again black is already running out of moves, this is not a force in line, black could have taken on h3, but I really like just to give the queen on f3, and here white might try playing h4, but here we could take for example, and after g5 we just take what is again run out of moves, not to mention that black is also having a material advantage. So I hope that you liked these games by this legendary player, if you did please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to be notified about my next videos, so that's it for now and I'll talk to you again very soon.